I've missed a little bit off the pattern. This is the pattern for the banjo. For the, it's where the change wheels go. For the dividing head. I've missed this little lug here. It's a lug as a clamping bolt goes through, which clamps this onto the main body. So all I've done, I've clamped this to the bench. I've used one of the backing sheets off my 12 inch disc sander. That's what comes to protect the glue on the, on the sanding discs. The glue won't stick to that. And I've sanded a bit of wood to, to shape. Glued it on and just had it in place with two pins. It doesn't need a physical fastening under there. Once I load dry, and now it's time, but really by tomorrow night, that will be as, as strong as the wood. What I'll do, I'll glue a couple of bits together for you, and I'll show you how strong it actually is. A couple of bits of plywood. We'll glue them together. So mix the glue about, you can feel it, you can feel it start to stick, it slides and it sticks. I'll pop it in the vase. Put a little bit of weight on it. I'll leave that later in the morning night and I'll take it out and we'll do a destructive test on it. See how good the glue is. The core body filler we'll put on here has dried, I've roughly sanded it. Uh, it's just a case of sandpaper and sand it down. All the corners, all these edges are going to be rounded off. You're going to break all the corners. Otherwise you'll have problems getting it out of the mould. Nothing special about sanding, it just takes time, that's all. Various layers of sandpaper. You can see you've got to get all the nice and smooth. The more time you put into your pattern, the better, the better will be your casting. I like to that corner there, they all need to be rounded off. Then these pieces here, we'll put fillets in there. You see that you always see a casting, they've always got nice fillets, nice webs in them. Even Chinese stuff's got nice, nice webs in them. When I first started casting and pattern making, I used to put car body filler in, I'll put a finger full of car body filler in there, and I'll maybe spend an hour sanding the bastard stuff away. And a friend of mine put it under this stuff, it's, it's wax filler, it's what you use, I think you use it for fiberglass, fiberglass work for moulding, for fillets on fiberglass uh, patterns, easy to apply, you just push it into the, push it in, work it in, it gets nice and sticky as it becomes hot, push it in like that, and I'll go and get the, I'll go and get the magic fillet tool, Okay, so we've we'll pushed our wax fillet in, what I use, it's actually the, the ball end of my wiggler. Push it in. Takes all the excess wax off. I've got various size, various size ones, where you can see it leaves a nice, a nice wax fillet. Push it in. This block of wax will last a lifetime, I would imagine. He's doing it the amount I do. So when that when that comes out of the out of the mold, it'll have a lovely a lovely fillet in, like customs are meant to have. That's what I fill it for, so the pattern comes out of the mould. So it's a stronger. We can use a smaller ball and put a smaller fillet on. I've got a bigger one for bigger patterns. You can buy wax fillets already made up, comes in lengths. I haven't got any obviously, that's why I'm doing this.
People have asked for paint, I use for painting patterns. I use whatever I can get, cheap with car boot sales. I do use this stuff though, it's a cellulose based primer filler. I put a coat of this on first, it seals the drain of the wood. It seals any small imperfections that need further attention. Try and spray it outside, it's ideal in the summer you can. Right, the primer fill has dried, uh, I'll give it a bit more a bit more flat off. All we're going to do now is give it a coat of red paint, red gloss paint. I just happen to have some res red gloss paint and patterns do look good in red. Cause black, patterns red. Red's always been a lucky colour for me with patterns. People don't seem to realise how much time actually goes into, a, into making a pattern. Quite a lot. It's great this this warm weather, this will dry next, this should be dry by tomorrow. I often spray my patterns, it just depends what what paint I've got. Good. You don't paint, you don't paint that face where they go together. Any paint that goes onto there will be scraped off. Any gloss paint anyway. That's the thing using the nice hard wood for the pattern as opposed to MDF. Oh, look at that bastard. MDF absorbs, absorbs moisture. MDF's just horrible. Putting a pretty good finish on that. Probably if I quit of that tomorrow we should be. I'll try and get this cast at the weekend if I can. You're gonna be casting aluminium. This is the pattern we glowed up last night for the for the banjo, for the dividing head. What it asked for is four pieces on here, uh, roughly eighth of an inch square for raised bits on the casting I have no wood that size but I have some 360 inch key steel I should be able to cut that length and so I can drill it and put some panel pins in to hold it in place and I can put fillets in, paint it right, I've cut some bits of key steel at the right length The nails I've got a 40 thou, I've got a 40 thou drill. I'm going to put a counter sink in to give the drill something to start on and also for the nail head to disappear into. Great temptation to grab the drill chuck like that to stop us doing do it. At the least it'll burn your hand. I did have a 40 thou drill there. Bollocks. Yeah. 
that's it. Incredible, these chucks will go down to 40 thou, and this one goes up to 5 eighths, 16 mil, and it's still accurate. I've got the mill run as fast as it can. Try the nail in to make sure. Yep, the head's the head's down, so that'll be fine. In the drone, it specifies a 3 8 slot here uh, with a 3 8 BSF bolt. I haven't got any 3 8 BSF bolts, I've got loads of 10mm stuff. I've got a nice brand new 10mm cobalt cutter to put the slot in. So I'm going to use a couple of 6mm nuts, the spacers, which are 10mm. I mean, we're talking about a pattern here. We'll try and Try to shorten the nails as well. And people think casting's easy, it is. Once you've messed up making patterns and When you think there's all this work, I'm only going to make one, but I'll probably make two, I'll generally make one, and then find I can make it better, so I'll do another one. That nut's just pissed off. When you do something, you think, I don't need to look at that, I can do it better. So you do it a different way. Oh, you bastard. Punch, punch them down. Bollocks, that's nice, got a good hold. Just what we need. Right, so we'll put our 10 mil nuts in. Our spacers. The more time you put in your pattern, the better result you're going to get. I 
All me gear, my engineering gear, is all laid out properly in boxes, taps and dies and nuts and bolts. And I've got a big plastic box full of nails that I rake through. It's gonna hurt me this, I can tell. Bastard thing. Last nail. Learned one thing, cut the nail at an angle, goes in easier. Right, so we've got the four ribs on. Bit sand, a coat of paint, ready to cast. I've made it slightly wider than the drone. That's the tunes and dimensions out of 10 mil. These are 316s instead of eighths, just what I had. They're actually quarter inch shorter. There's asked for six and an eighth, and the casing comes in 12 inch lengths. I wasn't going to waste two lengths for the sake quarter of an inch. Excellent. If you remember, uh, yesterday I glued two bits of plywood together and I said we're going to do a destructive test to see how strong the glue is. Well, let's destruct the bastard. See what's happened? The bond hasn't broke. It's actually broke the... It snapped the layer of plywood off. It snapped the bond and the plywood, not the glue bond. I should use some proper wood, two bits of work. But it's just pulled a layer of plywood clean off.